I knew it was Clever girl, you <laughs> <laughs> Now, Rose, it's time to get undressed. No, Brian, don't. Hulk. <laughs> Rose. Do what you brought us up here for. And I'm sitting there in my bus. I'm sitting there in my bus, going nowhere. It's frozen. Jeez, my knees. Hey, Rosie, take my shoes off, huh? That's a good, baby. Uh, people in the bus are screaming at me. I say, you want me to fly, buddy? <laughs> You want me to tunnel under the cement? Sit down and shut up. And then this old lady, she must be, must be close to 80. She steals my radio. Yeah, she steals my radio. Great. Let me know when supper's ready.
Atmul Society of New Guinea, they recognize no difference in rank or class. With, of course, the one exception, always the one exception. Sex. <laughs> oh. Actually, the difference between the sexes, and I'll quote Bateson here. Of course, you've all read your Bateson. A little academic, I know, but read them anyway. In reference to the processes that generate the division, Bateson says that the men are occupied with the spectacular, dramatic, and violent activities. Sounds interesting. <clears throat> While women are occupied with the useful and necessary routines of food gathering, cooking, and rearing children. Now, of course, we all know that spectacular and dramatic beat useful any day. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Blankford. Speaking of spectacular and dramatic, oh. Professor Michaels has asked me to tell you about the three months I spent living in a Yatmul village as a representative of the Anthropological Society. These people, as Professor Michaels has demonstrated so well, bear a striking resemblance in their social... Professor Michaels. The departmental meetings in Chesterton's office at five. Yes, I know. Well, the bleak and boring two hours, without a doubt. Professor Blankford, I want to talk to you. You look so worried. Nothing to worry about. Rose, I still see worry on your face. It's much better. The other night's all forgotten. Thank you. You got some sleep. You have circles on your eyes. Did any of those senile academics understand it? Well, they applauded when I finished. Well, of course they were listening to one of the foremost authorities on anthropology. They were probably just glad I was finished. So, what'd you do for fun? You must have had some fun. Three seminars, two study groups, and three days. Oh, in between I washed my hair. That was fun. Is she telling the truth? Come on, Carl. All work and no play. <laughs> Well, you know how those conventions are. How are you, Rose? Are you okay? Fine. You're okay, then? Yeah, just fine. Did you see that? Did you see the way he was? He was just like he was 16 again or something. I know Carl, and he's definitely interested. Can't you tell? Oh, Susan, how could he be interested in a woman with these circles under her eyes? Look horrible. Well, he must have figured you were interested, which you have been for months. And he must have decided to pursue it a little in his own. Oh, his own. enough, Susan. Can't you think of anything else? Rosie, what's the matter with you? I'm sorry. The replay shows beams were under pressure from the blitz. Yeah, that's it, Rosie. Yeah. Get me another beer. It's flat. Complete to Brian. Go, go. Number eight. Steps out of bounds. That's it. That's it. That's terrific. 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 Watch your replay. Watch, 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 watch 88. Yeah, watch 88. Oh, 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 dear. No, 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 I'm good. No, this. What's the matter? The tragedy? Get a red.
Hi. Hi. Oh, did I wake you? So what have you had? I almost didn't come. Well, are you here? How about coming in? Uh, I'll make tea. Oh, no, don't go to any trouble. I really can't stay. You came to see me, and now that you've seen me, you're leaving? I changed my mind. You're making me crazy. I'll make some tea. You're right. I'm crazy tonight. Oh, no, no, no. I said you are making me crazy. Not that you're crazy. But you sure are edgy. I think I'd better go. Is it your father? No. Well, did something happen at school? No, it's nothing. Usually we can talk about anything. What's the matter? I'll see you tomorrow, Susan, OK? I'll see you. Amazing to me how you survive with all the staying awake and waiting up for me, you do. I worry. I know. Come on, upstairs, go to bed. <clears throat> upstairs, or your back's going to hurt you in the morning. Mm -hmm. OK. Rosie? Nothing. Uh, I was playing a game. Someone was chasing me and I tripped. Who? Well, this professor at the conference. You wore that dress last weekend? Told me you went there to work. It reads on paper or something. That's right. So how come you wore a dress like that? Well, there was a party the last night. At that party, some man you don't know chase you and makes you tell your dress? Yeah. You call that a game? Who is this guy? You don't know him. What happened, Rose? Nothing, Papa. Sounds like trouble. You got into trouble. 
Please, don't. What'd you do? I couldn't help it. They made me. Who? Three men. Rosie, what did you do? Nothing, Papa. Don't tell me nothing, Rosie. What did you do? Professor Michaels? Uh, yes. I'm Detective Lobel. I'm sorry we couldn't have a nicer room for this, but at least we can talk alone in here. I uh, think I'd better go. Professor Michaels, you told the officer at the desk that you've been raped. If that's true, then you need to talk to me. Come on, sit down. We'll just talk for a few minutes. Yeah, I know this is going to be painful. But the easiest thing to do is just begin at the beginning and tell me what happened. Uh, don't worry about this thing. We'll pick you up just fine. Okay. So, when did it happen? Uh, the last night of the convention. There when was a faculty party. Don't you think that women are as entitled to recreational sex as men? Yeah, sure, but, but I saw Rose in the office today, and she looks like something's wrong. Now, Carl, your attitude towards women is way out of date. What's wrong with it? Well, you still got him on that damn pedestal, and you ask any intelligent woman, she does not want to be there anymore. So he put me on this regimen Mega doses of vitamin C with breakfast. Brian, don't you feel the whole thing was kind of, well, what? Sorted. Now you're gonna tell me I got a problem, right? Hey, let me, let me put it this way, all right? You got this unattached woman, well over 21, independent, got a strong career, and she invites three guys back to her hotel room after a party. Now, what would you think she wanted? An intellectual discussion about the permanent effects of martial law in Poland? Or, uh... <laughs> Just remember, she made the invitation. <laughs> okay, okay, so you invited the men to your hotel room? Yes. Why did you do that? My dress was torn. Thank you. And wet. For what? I, I, I tore it on the tree, and I went in the river. And Dr. Blankford 
kept telling me to change. Okay, fair enough. Now tell me why you didn't go up to your room by yourself. Well, I started to. I, I asked the men to wait for me. And then Brian Garvey said uh, something. He said, oh, what do you think that you're the only woman here? Uh, we might not be here when you get back. And you said, come with me? Yes. That sure sounds like an open invitation to me. Well, I, I didn't mean it that way. I was just having such a good time. I didn't want it to end. And then when you were all back in your hotel room, uh, weren't you concerned about what would happen? No. Why not? Well, they were all being so nice. How old are you, Miss Michaels? I'm 30. And what do you do? I'm a college professor. Are you as naive as you sound? Uh, I, I don't know how to answer that. Then what happened? Uh, then I tried to leave to go to the bedroom to change my clothes. And Brian Garvey wouldn't let me. And Professor Blankford kept telling me to get undressed. Right there where I was standing. Uh -huh. And I did. Why, Miss Michaels? There were three of them. Why didn't you refuse? They forced me. It, it was against my will. And you never screamed for help? No. Why not? They were men I knew. Were you frightened? Yes. Of what? That they'd hurt me. Well, what made you think that? They locked the door. Could any of what you did that night be called a seduction? I don't think so. Yes, but would the men have called it a seduction? You wanted them to stop? Yes. And they said? They acted like they didn't hear me. Maybe they didn't. Or maybe they did, Paul. Maybe they did hear her, and they chose to disregard it. I don't know if I can convince Paul to take on your case. Yeah, he doesn't seem to believe me. I mean, doesn't it make sense, what I said? It makes sense to me, but you have to make me a promise, a solemn oath. If we go ahead, there's no changing your mind. There are no witnesses, no extenuating circumstances. It's only your word we've got. If we go forward, it won't be settled quickly, and you have to have staying power. You cannot back out. A deal? If Mr. Fellows decides to go ahead with this, does that mean that he believes me, that I'm telling the truth? Yes. Do we have a deal? Yes. No matter how difficult it gets. Yes. OK. I'm your advocate, your shrink, your mother, for as long as this takes. All right. You have my number. Call me any time, night or day. Thank you. you don't believe her. It doesn't seem to matter whether I do or not. Though for the record, I do. No violence, no bruises, no witnesses. Oh my God, she knew all the men. You call that a crime? She said she was forced. 
Ah, maybe. You think she's lying? I'm not getting the whole story. Well, maybe she doesn't know it yet. Now, well, when she figures it out, and if we decide that a crime's been committed, will she stand up in court? That's what they pay me for. Go home. Your husband needs you. The same for your wife. Thanks for the case, Lobel. It's a real easy one. It is a weak case. But you believe her? Yes. Is he going to file charges? Maybe. Would it help if we heard what the men had to say? My hunch is a whole lot. Thanks, Jean. Hello? Yes? I think he's in the shower. Who's calling, please? Okay, just a minute. I'll get him. Brian? Brian, telephone? Who is it? A detective Lobel. Hello? Yes, speaking. What did the police want? Would you believe breaking and entering? No. How about too many parking tickets? Brian. All right. uh, it's about school. It's nothing. But you were so angry. Come on. You don't have any shoes on. Grass is wet. What did that detective want? Ruth! Enough. This is my business, and I'll take care of it. Okay? Okay. I don't care what she's told the detective. The girl is disturbed. I've known her for five years. Listen, Dick. She agreed. I don't need ethical counseling. Just give me legal advice. Yes. Yes, okay, I'll speak with the detective. I don't see how formal charges can be considered either. Did you hear? Rape. Three counts of rape. Uh, Dick, I'll call you back. I've got a distraught young man in here. Right. Leave that hotel room. <sighs> rape, he said. None of us raped that girl. There were three of us and her. All consenting adults. <sighs> I don't know. But you don't remember correctly. Oh, my God. Carl, I'm certain that none of us, including Rose, did anything wrong. Yes. Do you believe it? 
She was in every way as agreeable as we were. God, more so. She was coming on to us all night. Well, Carl thinks we've done something wrong. Yeah, I thought that we settled that. Listen, a woman is ashamed of herself, so she walks into a police station and points the finger. Carl, when you calm yourself, you'll see that the key is consent. Rose consented, didn't she? Well, I'm sure she did. Obviously, Brian feels the same way. That's how you remember it? Of course. Professor Blankford? That's the way it was. I'm sure you'll see it when your head is clear. Okay. Okay. Yes. She consented. She did. How you doing, Rosie? I'm okay. Need to talk to you. I've got 20 left to go. I'll call you. Uh, don't call at home. Your pop, the ogre. No. I'll call you at work. No, better not. They've been on my back lately. I'll call you on campus. I could use a friend. Here I am. We're friends. You promised, you know, we'd be better friends now that we're not married. I'll call you. I will, Rosie. I promise. Now, Mr. Jerome, I want you to tell me just what happened. I'm supposed to tell you what happened? What? Go ahead. Whatever you want. Look, a woman comes in here and says she was raped. That doesn't mean I believe her. Doesn't mean we're going to do anything about it. I'd like to get the man's side of it. <sighs> OK. Well, I tried to leave at one point, very early in the evening. Why was that? Well, because she was with Professor Blankford. I didn't want to intrude. But she held on to me. She grabbed my arm, wouldn't let me leave. Stay with us, she said. Maybe one man wasn't enough for her. She said, come with me to her room, she meant. We all knew what she meant. That woman is 30 years old, and she knew what she was doing. Sort of an unspoken understanding, then. Well, nobody said, OK, let's go up there and have sex, but it was clearly understood. And the way things are between men and women. Hey, they have to say no a few times, so we'll respect them, right? I mean, you know, it's, it's unspoken agreements. Oh, that's enough, Brian. Kind of like ESP, huh? Hey, look. It was very clear. Not Brian. I don't know. Just settle down, Brian. Well, formal charges have been filed. She cries rape, and the three of us are fighting for our lives. You think the university is going to keep me on with even a hint of rape connected to my name? Look, all she's made is an accusation. For her own reasons. Just an accusation. That's all they have. Yeah. Why is she doing this to us? The woman decided she was raped. Right. Two days after the fact. Second thoughts. <laughs> I know her. She could have second thoughts again.
How are you, Rose? I'm okay. This is very difficult. Yes, it is. I know you believe you're in the right. Different people in the same situation will view things differently. I know what happened. You're hurting a great many people, Rose. That's interesting, because I was hurt. I understand. We both know you've acted against your own interests in the past. Oh, you mean Peter. You're the only one who couldn't see him for what he is. You wouldn't. It's almost as if they were somewhere inside. You knew he would mistreat you. It made you even more eager to marry him. Sounds so sick. Not sick. Foolish, and you were hurt. Don't be foolish again, Ross. Think about your responsibility in all this. Will you do that? Think about it carefully. Together at the same school. When people know each other, it's not rape. Oh, give me a break. I want you to read these. There was an unspoken agreement. Now, what kind of an unspoken agreement do you suppose there was? The kind that bulldozed right over what Rose wanted. That's why the agreement was unspoken. I'll read it. Rose believed those men were going to hurt her. We can build our case around that implied force. Don't tell me how to do my job. She was frightened. Murder. I think that girl is frightened a lot. Frightened of what those men were doing to her. Paul, sometimes you're so thick. You better guarantee me that girl will hold up in court. You want me to sign an oath? I'm sticking my neck out. I want it in blood. <laughs> you got it. My own daughter doesn't tell me the truth. Papa, listen. I, I called up that detective to find out why those men aren't in jail. I hear the real story. What were you doing in a hotel room with three men anyway? You tell me that. I just asked him. What do you expect a man to think? You invite him in. It didn't occur to you me. Go that... out of town with a bunch of men. They what? They were faculty you members. Spend a weekend in some professor. fancy hotel with a bunch of men. You get drunk. I was not drunk. And you drunk. write three of them up to your room, and then you turn around and yell that you were raped? Rose, you know what they call women like that? You better forget this, this court business right now. I told Nora that... Rose. Was... You told Nora. Rose, you make me ashamed. No daughter living in my house, in this house, is going to do that. I'm telling you. I need a promise. Uh, Rose! Now, you hear me? You hear what I said? Yes. Going out for Rose. To do what you told me to do. At this time of night? Do you have a reason for backing out? A good reason? I just changed my mind. Oh, I see. Look, Nora, different people in the same situation see things differently. I'm hurting three other people. Mm-hmm. 
Well, maybe my perspective isn't the right one. Well, we all know that men are more logical and see things more clearly. Why don't we just accept their version of this rape and be done with it? I don't really care what you think. Do you, uh, you really care what Rose thinks about all this? I've got a tough wife. We made a deal, remember? Yes. Look, I wanted to be with Carl. I mean, I've always been really attracted to him. Pretty damning statement. Yeah, but don't you see that if I'm going to be honest with myself about this thing, I have to realize that, that I wanted to be with him, that I encouraged him to come over to me. And, of course, it also follows that you wanted to be raped. No, I was out of control. I was hysterical, uh, laughing and making Brian Garvey chase me. I never act like that, never. Never flirted before? Shame on you. Who's gotten to you? What do you mean? Which of the men in your life have told you to reconsider? My father. Professor Blankford. But that's not all. I took my clothes off in front of them, all three of them. Someone is lying about me and making accusations against me. Who? It's Rose Michaels. She is saying that I raped her, but she's lying. Why would she do that? Blankford thinks it's because she's disturbed. He was, he was her thesis advisor. He's known her for years. And she is accusing me and Blankford and Carl Jerome. But she's making the whole thing up. It happened. Last weekend, the last night of the conference. Three of you? Believe me, Ruth, she was not raped. And now she is trying to punish us Do you believe me? That you slept with another woman? Yeah, I believe that. No. That I love you? What difference does it make? Ruth, I need to know. Will the defendants please rise? 
Stuart Richard Blankford, is that your true name? Yes. Brian Allen Garvey, is that your true name? Yes. Carl Jerome, is that your true name? Yes. He said Stuart Richard Blankford, Brian Allen Garvey, and Carl Jerome are accused by the district attorney of the crime of rape in violation of section 436, subdivision 4, rape in concert, three counts, a felony committed as follows, that the said defendants did willingly, unlawfully, feloniously, with force and violence, have and accomplish an act of sexual intercourse yes, with and upon a person occurred at an out-of-state anthropology convention when professors Stuart Blankford, Carl Jerome, and Brian Garvey forced Ms. Michaels into sexual relations with them. A date will be set for the preliminary hearings on the three counts of rape. Attempt to contact university officials have been fruitless. They're unavailable for comment. And what should my comment be? That we have been unjustly accused. It's gone beyond that. Well, at least that the university stands behind us. You want to know how many calls I've received this morning from the Board of Regents? Eight. Why not 11? Because three of the members are out of town and haven't read the morning paper. Professor Blankford <clears throat> feels that the case will be thrown out of court. If this thing goes to trial, Stuart, there's no way the university will be able to withstand the publicity, even for you. Uh, Papa, it's a preliminary hearing. It's not a trial. I want you to forget the whole thing. Papa, those men hurt me. Those are going to make it worse for yourself. You know what people will say about you? You know, it's over now. It's done. It's Rosie, why couldn't you stay married the way you're supposed oh, to? Oh, Papa, that's not fair! You know why? Rosie, you know why? Why? There's something wrong with you. Papa! No, no, there, there's something wrong with you, and that's why you get into trouble. Now, baby, I want you to call that woman up. Call her up right now and tell her you changed your mind. I can't. What did you say? I won't. Rosie, do what I tell you. I don't want to! Get out of my house. I couldn't sleep either. Al was snoring. <laughs> my father snores. <laughs> I remember my mother, when I was little, used to come and crawl in the bed to get away from the noise. I used to pray for those nights. You put me in your son's room. Is he away at college? Hmm. <laughs> Michael's in his final year of law school. I was a baby, and there I was having a baby. Al said we'd better get married or there'd be a terrible scandal. He talked me into it. Nowadays, nobody would blink an eye. Well, you should talk to my father. No, thank you. I can't bear people who rant and rave. Well, he's not usually that way. He's usually very nice. Is accusing you of being a slut nice? He's not listening when you want to explain nice? He was tired that night from work. Weren't you? Yes, but... But men are allowed to get away with behaving badly, and women make excuses for them. Nora, I told you a lie. Remember when I told you that the men forced me? Yes, of course. It's in your statement. Well, they didn't physically force me. It didn't physically hurt me. And I made it sound like they did. I'm sorry. Sorry? You're sorry? Rose, the threat of violence, the, the belief that violence will be done to you is just as devastating and just as legally defensible. You 
not giving up on me. <laughs> we promised each other, didn't we? Yes, we did. No backing out. No. No, but sometimes, Nora. Sometimes do you think there's something wrong with me? Oh, look at the way you're eating. I got five minutes, and then I got a drug bust and a child who's been molested. Well, you're overworked, Paul. Tell me something I don't know. And being so overworked... Hey, you want to warm this up for me, Cheryl? Why would you go to the trouble of prosecuting a case you can't win? That's a good question. Uh, check. Especially since all you've got is the not very convincing word of one very unstable woman. And the fact that she was raped. Raped. Without violence. Without force, raped with implied threat and a total disregard for Rose's wishes. Look, Paul, you ever make love to your wife when she wasn't all that crazy about the idea? <laughs> it's not the same thing. When she says, no, I'm too tired or whatever. But you ignore her and she just lets you. Ever have that happen? My sex life is not an issue here. Yeah, well, where's the line drawn? Uh, Think about it. Oh, Paul, look. I mean, you will think about the idea, the concept. Susan? I made up a list. Her side of it and our side of it. Spare me the gruesome details. Don't you think that about 75% of the time, most men and women don't understand what the other is doing and or saying or wanting defense? to do? Look, isn't it? Wait a minute. Isn't it possible? Isn't it possible that Rose saw the experience one way, we saw it another? No right or wrong on either side. And no responsibility? You want to chalk it up as a big misunderstanding? Well, you know what you can do with your misunderstanding. The hell with your misunderstanding. Understand what happened, Carl. Figure out how you got into this mess. Say this? Papa, you just can't leave your bus like that. Mind your own business! This is my daughter! I want you to stop this. You hear me? I want you to stop this. I'm not leaving here until you tell me you'll stop this. Get away from me! Leave me alone! Please tell me where you're staying. I was a friend. Who? You don't know her. Who? Nora Strangers. She works with the DA. They're turning into something I don't like. No, but you feel you deserve to be in jail? No. That's why we have to tell the whole story. My lawyer doesn't have any ammunition. But if we go to the police, all three of us, voluntarily, and give them everything, not just the bits and pieces, then they'll have it all down on paper, and then the DA will have to drop the case. Maybe we should. Any recorded statement can, most probably, will be used against us. Damn it, Stuart! They have to hear us. And if they hear us, they will believe us. We'll have no protection. I can't believe your lawyer is allowing you to do this. Well, he can't stop me. Carl, what would we say? The truth. The way it happened. That she was consenting all the way. What about our responsibility? What our responsibility is to tell the truth. <laughs> 
Don't be motivated by impatience. In the preliminary hearing, we're not required to say anything. It's up to Rose. And I seriously doubt she'll be able to present a coherent argument. We tell the truth. We can only gain. There won't even be a preliminary hearing. Well? I don't know. I strongly advise against it. I need to talk about it. Well, we were talking with uh, Professor Blankford and I. Uh, where are we now? Oh, sorry, the um, convention room at the Quiet Springs Hotel. Sunday night? I'm a little anxious. Just go on. Okay, well, like I said before, we all talked and then Rose walked outside to the river making sure that we'd follow. Well, you just never know where I'm going. Well, slow down now, will you? No, I have no time to do this. You just have to do it. Oh, for me. We're going to be now. Hey, how do you know? Well, I'll go. I'll go. Send you back to the news later. I'll go. I'll go. I'll go. And then, there she was on the bridge. And she looked gorgeous. I mean, I've, I've seen her practically every day for the last year, and I never thought of her as particularly attractive. But that night, boy. She looked great. Hurry up, Slowpoke! Come on! <laughs> Sounds like a direct order to me. This is going to be an interesting evening. And she was charming. It took so long. Well, well, well. I see no one brought me a new drink. Take mine. No, I'll go get my own. I'm a big girl. Watch me. Amazing. I always thought of her as, oh, practical. Real competent in what she did. But this night, there was this whole other side to her. And then she uh, brought Brian Garvey over. She came to me. Do you understand? I didn't do anything to initiate any of it. I was sitting at one of the tables. We were passing wine bottles around. It was innocent stuff. And the next thing I know, this woman is leaning over me and stealing the wine bottle out of my hand. Brian, you don't hey, mind Rose. if I borrow this? Oh, here you go. You can have a glass of wine. Oh, well, in that case. Yeah. <laughs> I saved my life. Oh, you look, you look lovely tonight, Rose. This is the American Beauty Rose, right? Oh, hey. <laughs> oh, hey. New variety here. Listen, Brian, you don't mind if I borrow him from oh, 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 I know oh. just can I bring this the party me? for you. Yeah. Rose brought Brian Garvey over. She was flirting with us, teasing, really. Then uh, Brian started to chase her, and uh, I walked up onto the bridge with uh, Professor Blankford and watched. Brian! Oh. Oh. Come on. Come on. You can't catch me. Well, here's that girl. Oh, you can't. Oh, Whoa. you can't. That girl's just oh, asking to be caught. Look at her. <laughs> She's only playing a game. That was exactly what she's doing. The stuff outside was fun. But the evening really got going when she invited the three of us up to her room. I told you that already. About how she said, come with me. Right. Now, none of us suggested that. You know, I really followed her lead. She seemed to want us to go with her. And anybody would have thought so, because she sure looked happy about it. And then, uh, when we got to her room, she made us all drinks. We all took turns dancing with her. Dancing in the night. Oh, turned on the radio. <laughs> May I have this dance, Squire? Oh, yes, right. <laughs> no, that's not for you, it's for you. Thank you. 
waltzing in the wonder of why we're here. Time hurries by, we're here. Hang on. She stood in the middle of the room and took off her wet dress. Nobody laid a finger on her. She undressed herself in front of us. And then she undressed Professor Blankford. I hesitated at first. I've never been in a situation like that. My experience with women is normal. But you would call me a Don Juan. I was unclear as to what to do, so I... Uh, I let Garvey go first. When he came out, Professor Blankford went ahead. When I went into the room, Rose was alone. And she made it clear that she wanted me to. Rose, come sit with me a moment. I'm on my way home. Then may I talk with you a bit? <laughs> Do you remember when you were studying for your orals, when you wanted to quit? Yes. You were in tears. And Do you remember? I fixed you Irish coffees and we talked until the sun came up. That was five years ago. Well, where would you be today if you'd quit school? I don't think we should be talking. Two more years, Rose. Then I'm going to retire, finish my book. And the field work, the field work I've been waiting to do all these years. And you're making sure no one will want me. I've done nothing wrong, Rose, yet you're going to ruin me. One evening, one, and everything I've built in a lifetime will be shattered. How can you be so selfish? Rose! Rose! It's a week from Thursday. Nine in the morning. I'll pick you up. Okay. And have a balanced meal. A little protein. Carbohydrates for energy. And not too much coffee. Rose, you're going to have to get on the stand and convince a judge that we have a case. If you do, 
Then we go to trial. I know. Nora told me. Can you do it? I'll try. Nora, can she pull it off? Rose is sitting right there in front of you. All right. All right. Rose, can you convince the judge? I'll try. Not good enough. Rose? I'm in my room. I'm taking some things to my new apartment. Papa, why don't you listen to me? Take your things and go. You know, I have spent, I think, my whole life listening to you. Tell me what to do, listening to you complain. So now you don't have to listen anymore. Most of all, I think I've listened to you criticize me. What did you do, Rosie? Right? I think I hear that in my sleep. I, I always feel like I've done something wrong. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Papa, look at me. Look at me. I'm not worthless. But that's how you make me feel. My new number is 556. You leave in my house, leave. Not too long or someone is going to come up from the audience. I left the new number on the table just in case one day you'd like to call me. A $4,000 home entertainment center with video tape recorder and projection screen with a 500 PC trail You can do it the hard way or the easy way here on... I want you to tell me that Rose can convince a judge. Okay, Rose can convince a judge. I'm not... It's not funny, Nora. I'm not going to be easy on her. I'll talk to her, but give her a break, Paul. It's only a hearing. No, that's the point. I'm going to be as hard as I have to. If she can't stand up to my questioning at a hearing, what's going to happen to her when the defense starts to cross-examine her at the trial? Why did the ram go over the cliff? Why? Because he failed to make the U-turn. Oh! Oh! Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jasmine tea coming up. He waits on you. Oh, when he makes Japanese food, I stay out of the way. Doesn't it make you uncomfortable? Al, does it make you uncomfortable to serve two women? Laura. Women should do for men, right, Rose? Something your father taught you. Right. Well, serve the tea. Be comfortable. <laughs> Sweetheart, have you seen this gorgeous guy Rose keeps in the kitchen? Yeah, I've often wondered what it would feel like to look in a mirror and see a face like that staring back. You have a nice face, Al. And you're a sweet girl, Rose, but gorgeous is gorgeous. Is this Peter? Yes. Your boyfriend? Ex-husband. Ooh, ah, have a cookie. Thank you. Sweetheart. Let's see. Grace under pressure, courage and fortitude in the trial ahead. You rigged this. Trust me. That's what men always tell me. <laughs> a joke? She made a joke out of all this. <laughs> <laughs> So what does your father say about this? Oh, my father. You know, my father. I mean, immediately he assumed it was my fault. How can a rape be your fault? Well, you know, what were three men doing in your hotel room like that so immediately? I'm guilty. Oh, no. I don't know. So, 
So, Peter? Peter? Peter. Why don't we go sit downstairs on the new couch? Rosie, your bed is fine. I'm, I'm impressed, Rosie. Look at what you've done for yourself. Well... Away from the old man? Well, I didn't exactly leave him. Your either. own apartment? Yeah. Hey, I'm proud of you. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. I always liked you this. You never told me that. Sure. And how come you left me? Because you have no place else to go. I've got places. Oh. I think you better go, Peter. Hey, slow down here. No, no, you better get out. You're getting out of control, Rose. Oh, well, you're damn right I'm getting out of control. This is my house and it's it's clean and you're making it dirty. Now just get out. Isn't it interesting that you always get out of control when sex is involved? That's not true. Sure it is. Look at you. I saw it happen all the time. You know what? I bet those men didn't rape you. It's not rape. Not with that kind of permission. Get out. Talking with Mary Lou Ritter and uh, would would you speak up a little, Rose? I'm sorry, I was talking with Mary Lou Ritter and Joan Katz. We'd just come from my suite. We'd had a little party. That was on Sunday night. Yes, the last night of the convention at the faculty party. Okay, go on. Uh, Mary Lou and Joan were talking about car seats. What was that? Uh, infant car seats. They both have children and they were comparing the brands, which was safer. I see. All right. Go on then. Uh, uh, car seats. Yes. I was talking with Mary Lou and Joan, but I was watching <clears throat> Carl, Prof 
Professor Jerome. He was standing with uh, Professor Blankford and some other men not too far away from us. I was hoping that he'd notice me and come over and talk, but he didn't. One time he caught me looking at him, and instead of turning away, as I usually would, uh, I smiled at him. You don't normally smile at men? Yes, but not in that way. It was a little more than just a friendly smile. I was kind of embarrassed by what I'd done, and it felt like I was blushing, but... Anyway, he didn't come over, but... Professor Blankford did. Terry? No. Anne. Mary. And Joan. Hey, how are you? Professor Blankford was being very charming. He always is. He brought me over a, a fresh drink. I think it was a scotch. I'm not sure. I really don't drink that much. Uh, Professor Blankford was being very nice to me. He complimented me on my work in the department. He told me how attractive I was looking that evening. I knew it was just flattery, but it felt good. And I was a little nervous being with him in that way. Our relationship had always been very uh, different, very proper. He, uh, he's one of the two or three top men in our field. He'd been my thesis advisor. And I mean, there he was, paying attention to me. He also said I was <clears throat> one of the few women intelligent enough to respect. What was that? He complimented me on my intelligence, at least at the time I thought it was an immense compliment. Then Carl Jerome was there. He looked like he didn't really know whether to uh, stay with us or leave. No, really, I, I asked him to stay. Oh, please stay with us. Okay. <laughs> nice night, isn't it? Mm-hmm. You, uh, you look real nice, Rose. Well, thank you. Is that a new dress? Yes, it is. Oh, smashing, as they say. <laughs> Oh, boy, I'd like to go out and get some air. How about anybody else? Well, it is a little warm in here. Door's right over there. Mm -hmm. I'll lead the way. Go. And then you suggested that the three of you go outside. Yes. It was very beautiful outside. The wind was blowing, but it, it wasn't cold, and I, I wanted to be outside. I was feeling uh, rather high. Are you saying you were drunk? Hi. Uh, the best way that I can describe it is just, I was happy. I mean, two men were paying attention to me, complimenting me, and I was, I was high on the attention. It took so long. Well, 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 I see no one brought me a new drink. Take mine. No, I'll go get my own. I'm a big girl. Watch me. And I wanted the feeling that I had to go on forever. It's like a, it was like a magic spell. I mean, someone had given me a few hours of pure happiness, and I would have done anything to keep it from ending. How did Brian Garvey become involved? I brought him over. I did it. Let's see, Rose got a drink. <laughs> Look who I found. <laughs> well, how are you, Brian? All right, all We're right. on a little field expedition here. Oh. Uh, she's usually quite sedate, our Rose. Oh, oh, thank you. Yes, I don't normally act this way. <laughs> oh, well, what a shame that is. A shame that I do or a shame that I usually don't? <laughs> I've never seen this side of her. Oh, well, how about this side or this side? Well, those are very nice, very nice sides. Flanks. I think they're called flanks. 
legs. Wow, well, those are those are definitely thighs. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see those thighs, Rose. Yeah. Oh, very nice. <laughs> now, uh, how about a look at the rest of the brisket? Yeah. Uh, Brian Garvey chased me down the riverbank. <clears throat> it was like a, a, a game. I was out of control. I have a problem with that. I encouraged him. I let him on. Professor uh, Blankford and Carl stood on the bridge and watched us. I felt like a child. I didn't have a worry in the world. <laughs> You're so good. <laughs> Aren't you cold? No, I'm too happy to be cold. Why don't you dry? Change it to something drier. No. Right now. Why not? <laughs> okay. You'll all be here when I get back. Well, maybe we will and maybe we won't. <laughs> what, do you think you're the only woman in this hotel, huh? Well, please, I'll hurry. Well, maybe you won't be fast enough, and I don't like to wait. I'll run. I don't know. I, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Come with me. Come with me. <laughs> Come on. Boy. How did they get in the room? I invited them in. They didn't want to wait in the corridor. And I had a small sitting room. I had to pay extra for it, but I wanted the trip to be special. Okay, don't move. I'll be right out. Hey, uh, do, you, do you feel like waiting out here in the hall? Yeah, sure. I'll wait for you, Rose. Okay. Uh, I don't know. It's, uh... Well, I'll only take a minute. I would like a nightcap, dear Rose. Oh, now, do you hear that, Rose? Uh, you can leave. Poor Professor Blank for cooling his heels out here in the hallway. Are you gonna ask us in? <laughs> oh, all right. Come in. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. That sounds even worse. <laughs> what I found. Oh, what a clever girl you are, Rose. Thank you. Okay, drinks all around for everyone. Uh, yeah. Okay, yes. One. May I have another drink, Professor Blankford? Hey, take off that wet dress, Rose. I will. It must be cold. Take it off now. <laughs> Carl? Oh, thank you. I thought you'd never get here. Yeah, why don't I help? Oh, don't. Oh, I don't know. Know. need a little help. <laughs> Come on, let's dance. Huh? Okay. <clears throat> Dancing in the dark. <laughs> Turn out the light. Dancing in the dark. Ooh. And it soon ends. We're waltzing in the wonder. May I have this dance, Squire? Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> oh no, that's for you. Oh, thank you. Of why we're here. Time hurries by. We're here and gone. <laughs> we're waltzing in the wonder. <laughs> Why we're here, time hurries by, we're here and gone, looking for the light. Bo 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 bom. <laughs> of a new light to lighten up the night. Oh, what? Oh, oh. Oh, oh. I think I'm dead. <laughs> here, let me get no, it. Right. Thank you. I'm dancing. This is great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all along, 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 along. We're waltzing in the wonder <laughs> of why we're here. Time hurried <laughs> by, we're here and gone. Now, Rose, it is time to get on. Um, I am done. I'll do it. Here. <laughs> No, in here, Rose. No, just here. No, come on. Come on, out here. Oh. Brian? <laughs> come on now. No. Hey, where are you 
doing? <laughs> Rose, what are you doing? Come on, we're having a good time now. Come on, back in here. <laughs> there you are. No, please. Come on. Now there's 15 seconds on the 24 second clock. And Michaels has the ball. She fakes to her left and Garvey is all over. <laughs> oh, 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 Press. Gone, Rose. Now. She's beautiful. Come here, Rose. Please. Please let me leave. Unbutton my shirt. Why did you go into that bedroom? They made me. Wait a minute. You just testified that Professor Blankford said, go on, Rose, and just like a good little girl, you went. That's right. Why didn't you say, I don't like this, I'm leaving? I tried to leave. I told you that. And? And Brian Garvey wouldn't let me. I, I told you that. But Brian Garvey didn't carry you into the bedroom, did he? No. You walked, didn't you? That's right. So these men could have assumed that you wanted to go. No, it was against my will. You're telling us you did not want to go to bed with those men. I just said that, no. But you did. The men had stopped listening to me. Why didn't you speak louder? What, the law says that a woman has to protest at a certain volume. Who's measuring it? Miss Michaels, you are asking us to believe that these three men, professional men, educated men, forced you to commit acts that were repugnant to you. Yes, that's right. But that's not what they say. They say that you led them on, that you flirted with them all evening. Yeah, I, oh, I guess I was flirting. So you enticed them. No. You wanted to go to bed with them. No! No, whatever happened the rest of that evening, I did not willingly stay in that hotel room. 
I did not willingly commit those acts on that bed. I'm sure if Carl Jerome searches his heart, he knows that's true. I suspect that he knew it that night. And Professor Blankford, I'm sure that he was aware of how I felt all along. Because Professor Blankford is always aware. He never loses control. I mean, it's one of the things he tried to teach me. I know how much he values control. So yes, I was out of control that night. I, I was greedy. I wanted the attention. I, want, I wanted the flattery. It felt good. I was naive. I was even stupid. All my life I have done what men have told me to do. My father, Professor Blankford, my ex-husband. I was afraid. I've always been afraid of what would happen if I didn't obey. That night, when all three men turned against me, I was terrified. But I managed to say no. I said it many times. I pleaded. Don't you think I have the right to say no? No, no, no matter how stupid I've been, no matter how far things have gotten out of control? Doesn't my voice carry as much weight as a man's? Don't I have a right to be heard? Are you asking me, Miss Michaels? No. I know the answer. I don't have to ask anyone. I said no, and I have a right to be heard. <laughs>